in a world of material, I feel like it's important to realize that, you know, your wealth isn't in what you possess, but how much of yourself you have in your possession. I feel like a lot of our life is spent trying to cultivate itself, but cultivating itself through our actions, not through any introspection, but looking out into the world and, and gaining certain things and attributing them to our character. And while this, you know, at face value isn't necessarily a bad thing, I realized that, you know, if we accept one thing, we have to accept others. And that's to say that if we're accepting our value from material, from things outside in the world, then we also accept our value from the negative material things in the world. And with accepting that duality, you're opening yourself to a sort of a, a negative experience or a negative potential. I'm not saying you can't have things, but realize these things aren't inherent to your character. Have detachments for sort of your, your material gains and, and realize that your value transcends beyond whatever you can possess. Because it's always going to be you that's possessing them, you that has it. And that you have to appreciate yourself for even being in a spot to possess anything. You know, we have to realize how significant and how blessed we are to just be alive sometimes. And understand that if we are to gain anything and if we are to do anything, it's about understanding what we put out and how we accept things as part of us. And in a lot of ways, what you put out is put on you. And that's to say, you know, with the specific way we conduct ourselves, our energy, our positivity, our negativity, whatever we do, it becomes a part of who we are. And that's why I feel like people with negative expressions, people that express themselves neg negatively, is just a telltale of what they have going on inside. Because, you know, if you're truly loving yourself, if you love yourself and you have yourself within your possession, I don't think you'll want to sort of spread negativity even to yourself. Because you realize, you know, the way we poison ourselves with our own minds and, you know, we are the physician. You know, you think yourself the illness, but you are the cure. And I think that's a that's a roomy quote. But regardless, you know, we have to stop treating ourselves like we're some kind of illness and treating our mind like it's some type of villain in this world because it's not. There is no villain because there is no hero. All that is is just you. And you have to learn to accept what that is and learn how to move forward past it. You know, your understanding of yourself is ultimately what limits you. It ultimately will limit you because the only thing that can limit you in this life, I feel like, is you. The only thing that can set that boundary for you is you. Whether or not people tell you, like someone can say, oh, you can't do this and you can internalize it and feel it. But at the end of the day, it's you that internalizes you that's feeling it. In the same way that we have to take responsibility for our emotions, we have to take responsibility for the way we're viewing the world. And while, you know, other people have an influence to it, once you acknowledge their influence, it's about your responsibility to let it go. Your responsibility to keep moving forward with your idea, with whatever you want to do with your life, because at the end of the day, it's your life. How long are we going to live in reference to words that aren't even inherent to us and aren't from us? You know, even some of the words you tell to yourself aren't necessarily 100% accurate. Our thoughts sometimes is just a relationship between our environment and, and how we perceive ourselves to be. And a lot of times I feel like it's you versus you and you feel like you're constantly battling with, with yourself because your ego is sort of prominent. And what I think the ego to be is just like the mental manifestation of who you think you are. And you hold on to that so fervently that, you know, you ought to lose who you really are in doing it. It's about the way we don't allow ourselves to, to be and don't let ourselves go. Like a lot of people say, oh, hold yourself together, hold on to yourself when you really just need to let yourself go. You really need to just allow yourself to be whoever you are without any, not necessarily restrictions, without any expectation. Because that's when you get to see the parts of yourself that you can interchange. The things that you can love more to, to make better. Because if you're not doing that, then you can't see anything that's harming you. You know, if you if you don't acknowledge a the wound, then you can't treat it. You can't heal it properly. You know, it may heal on its own over time, but it may get infected. And just like that, if you don't take the time to appreciate yourself and see yourself, you have the potential to become corrupted by whatever you think yourself to be. If you don't take the steps to go beyond what you see out here and what's in the outside world, it comes back to bite you. You know, I feel like 
the importance in life and the importance of, of embracing yourself is to make it easier to make life sort of more simple and more i don't know attackable approachable because it, it truly should be it shouldn't be some battle between you and your environment you shouldn't feel uncomfortable in, in expressing yourself for who you are i feel like too much weight is put on the opinions of other people and the opinions of things that aren't us the system is set up in a way you know that some people will win some people will lose but that doesn't mean that you are a loser or a winner it just means that in this specific scenario you took l and it's about getting up and keep moving forward sometimes falling down is affirmation that we were standing it's about your continual progression towards yourself that allows you to exhibit what we call strength and power because it's not what you have it's not what you hold on to it's what you have it's what's inherent to your character it's that positivity that is a part of you that you allow to be a part of you that you allow to keep moving forward with you as you traverse through life it's not about carrying your negativity and i feel like we do that so often we carry a lot of things that aren't inherent to our character at all you know we think we're carrying ourselves we think we're taking ourselves along for the path but in reality we're not we're just limiting ourselves in terms of what we think we are because i don't know what it is but presence when you're truly present at least what i think to be truly present it doesn't feel like you have to be yourself or you have to think of who you are it's just like you're experiencing you're watching you're seeing the world in front of you instead of trying to digest it through a medium of your ego and you're just allowing yourself to be and that's not to say i don't have an ego that's not to say that anyone who's present doesn't have one but to say that your ego is just who, who you think yourself to be and if you're allowing yourself to be beyond your thought and be present then your ego is just you i don't think ego is a bad thing i think there are just bad egos and i think a lot of times we just don't allow ourselves to see through the cracks of our understanding we think ourselves to be something so stagnant that we fail to allow ourselves to be us. And I, it seems sort of contradictory because you would think, oh, you know, I have this definition for myself. I have this understanding so I know myself so I can change so I can do better, which is in some cases true. But I feel like that kind of change is is somewhat more informational than it is uh, spiritual because it has to sort of go beyond what you think yourself to be i feel like understanding of yourself and understanding of the world has to transcend your biases you have to understand where your negative thoughts come from and how negative thoughts aren't inherent to you how the negativity you place around yourself isn't necessary, necessarily correct i mean it may be a little correct you know you might have a little things to work on but regardless of which it's not your whole character you can't hate yourself into being someone better. And I, always, I say that in almost every video now. But you have to you have to learn to self-love. Appreciate where you are so you can appreciate wherever you go. Because if you don't love yourself when you're here, whenever you get to your goal, will you love yourself? If you, if, you base it, if you base your love for yourself off of your goal and off of things you gain, things you achieve, what happens when you stop achieving? When you stop attaining? If you stop attaining, that is. You know, what's left there? What I'm saying is you have to learn to love the foundation. You have to learn to love where you're coming from. Otherwise, you're not going to love where you're going. I feel like that's the subtle importance of being present. The subtle importance of, you know, honing your character to whatever you want to hone it to. Because at the end of the day, it's you and you. It's your relationship to yourself and how much you want to care. How much you want to put into this being that is you. And my whole thing is if you're here, be here. If you're going to be here, which you should, you know, your life is amazing. If you are going to be here, be here. Understand that you have as much potential as you give yourself. You're the only one that can tell yourself that kind of stuff, you know. Someone can say, oh, you're going to be nothing. You're not going to amount to anything. But what do they know? You know, any grounds for that type of understanding is only felt through them. You have to be aware of when you're accepting someone else's projection of you, someone else's image of you in their mind. And don't let that alter yours because it's not you. 
it's how they think and that's not to say don't take criticism that's not to say don't understand that because if it's coming from a careful place from someone you love some someone who genuinely has your best interests at heart it's okay to listen it's okay to accept the information but living by it and internalizing it is ultimately up to you it's just about being honest with yourself and, and content with the realization that who you are is subject to change and regardless of what you have to love yourself through the change love yourself while you're changing regardless appreciate your foundation so whatever is built upon it is something that you can love regardless of if you you know take it back down renovate it it's still based on your love for yourself and i feel like once you do that then you won't build something negative or something that's going to harm your foundation because you realize the significance and the importance of you and your presentness and your and your being here and your aptitude and, and ability to achieve. I feel like our ability to achieve is ultimately governed by how we think ourselves to be, whether or not we think we can actually achieve anything. That's why I feel like the subtle importance is always on you. The subtle responsibility is always on you. And that's not to say be stressed. It's not to say hold yourself to a, a crazy expectation, but hold yourself to a standard and let yourself go. Realize that if you have intention, if you're moving by intention, you don't have to put stress on yourself to be you. Who you are should not be a stressed thing. It should be comfortable. And, you know, what should be uncomfortable is, you know, certain situations that you run into that, that make you see more of yourself. But eventually you should get to a point where you're comfortable with that too. Comfortable with the unknown. What I'm saying is you shouldn't be the one to bring discomfort to your situations via your mind. Your mind often puts anxiety and puts stress and weight onto situations when they have no weight. You could do it like you might have a project or a presentation to do and your mind might be like, oh my God, what if I fail? What are they going to think about me? What are they going to do? Whole time everyone else is just worried about themselves. And if they are worried about, the, about you, who cares? They're worried about someone that's not them in regards to their expression. All you have to do is express yourself and do your best. All you have to do is be you and any judgment that's cast upon you for being yourself morally and ethically. Who cares? As long as you're taking care of yourself and what you think yourself to be and making sure you're conducting yourself in a respectful, moral manner. Then I honestly think it doesn't matter what judgment is cast upon you at that point. Because at the end of the day, no one can judge you but you. No one can cast that judgment or make opinions or make statements or connotate you but you. Because at the end of the day, it has to be something that you hear, you internalize, you accept, and you agree to. No one can hurt you without your permission. And that, and with that being said, it's not saying that you know people that hurt you aren't at fault. It's saying you're the one that let them in and, and you have to accept that you are partially responsible for that. It's not saying don't ever let anybody in ever again, but keep moving forward. You know, you have to sort of let that go because you have to be the one to give yourself closure and validation at some point. I feel like waiting for other people to get that or waiting for some circumstance to tell you that you're ready or you're worth something is it's sort of stupid. Your worth is beyond what you do and, and what you possess. Your worth is here. Your worth is your life, whatever you amount to. And if you made it to this point so far, congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back. Do five push-ups and give yourself a round of applause. It's important to cheer for yourself. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like you have to cheer for yourself in life. You know, there's no point I see in not cheering for yourself because at the end of the day, you're here with yourself all the time. Your life and the love you have for yourself has to transcend what you see sometimes. You know, you might be in an ugly situation. You might be down in the depths. You might take three L's in a row. But at the end of the day, the biggest W you can always carry with yourself is yourself. The, the greatest, most valuable thing you can always have in your possession wherever you go is yourself. And once you realize that, I feel like it gets easier. It gets a lot easier to sort of traverse the world and do whatever you want to do. Because it's no longer about how you're, how it's reacting to you, how this reaction is. It's about how you feel about yourself. And that's all that matters. It's about being you. And if you're being yourself and doing your best, 
I honestly don't think you need to do anything else. That's literally what I live by at this point. You know, of course, there's little tiny things that I think of, but I think being yourself and doing your best is it, sort of all encompassing. Being myself, I'm trying to be present. I'm, I'm doing what I need to do to make myself feel like myself and making sure I can exhibit myself in a, in a modern day and express myself in a way I feel like is befitting of myself. Doing my best is when I'm carrying out that expression in everything I do, like making my bed, do whatever, do whatever I need to do to feel like, you know, not necessarily fulfillment, but whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm trying to maintain, like if I'm feeding myself, feeding myself good food, doing my best, working out every day, doing my best, doing what I need to do to make sure that every area of my life is being stimulated and cultivated, my body and spirit. Because you're not just, a, it's like the tripartite hell. It's kind of a, a difficult thing to conceptualize, but you have to take care of all aspects of yourself. Not just the mental aspect, because they all connect to each other. If you're physically doing bad, you're mentally going to start doing bad. If you're mentally start doing bad, you won't want to be physically good. I just think there's, it's just important to be you. And realize that, you know, what you put out is put on you. And if you're putting out love to yourself, then you're putting love on to yourself. You're putting out love to the world, you're putting on love to yourself. Your limits only exist in your mind. and It's really just about how much of yourself you have in your possession. How much of you you can say is here right now. You know, how much of you is there to achieve what you want to achieve. And, uh, yeah. So if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching this 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 far. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I did. So, um, thank you guys for watching. Keep being y'all, keep being great. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Make sure you're being authentic to yourself, honest, and realizing that the only thing you need is you, really. And that's not to say don't care about anything else in your life. Of course, care, care deeply. I care deeply about everything in my life. But I realize that if it's not me that's that's doing the caring, then it's it feels partially ingenuine. So I have to make sure I'm being myself. I'm being true to who I am before I go out into the world and be true to the world. So um, thank you. And, uh, yeah.